All right, hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study of the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We are in Joshua chapter 2. I'm kind of going to go back. I'm going to start. We started in chapter 2 last time. I'm going to go back and start at the beginning. Um, chapters 1 and chapter 2, I'm kind of using as a introduction to the book of Judges uh, because actually the book itself sets up explains itself in terms of introduction and we'll see this more when we get into again chapter two again one of the things about again just i want to say this again when we talk about one one of the my passions is to study i can say this to study the the word of god the bible Again, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. And one of the things, and, and, and we I have I have such a strong passion for this is because, first and foremost, it's not being done to me in most churches. And yet, when you read the Bible, if you just read the Bible for itself, and as we're going to as we're going through, we're going to see that it is it is explaining itself. It's going to interpret itself. And that's why, if you notice, I don't quote men, scholars, theologians. I don't get into all of the theological aspects of describing the book. Now, there's some historic value that sometimes I, I, I go in, but... Most of the time, you see, I don't, I don't get into that. The reason why is because this study is to let the Bible itself, the plain reading of the Bible itself, teach itself. And what you're going to discover is, yeah, most churches, denominations get it wrong from one aspect to the other. So they may get it right in some aspects, but then in other aspects, they get it wrong, But right? And you see this kind of going back and forth. And and, and and so when we read, that's what I'm saying, when we read the Bible itself, and that's the, the, the beauty of this. Okay, so the book of Judges, again, I want to go back to chapter 2. And I'm going to kind of go through chapter 2. And we're going to see the, um, the transition from good to bad. And... Um, so I, I, I'm going to start at uh, um, verse 1 again. Uh, it says, The angel of the Lord went up from Gilgad to watch him and said, I brought, you out of the, I brought you out of Egypt and led you into the land I had promised to your fathers. I also said I would never break my covenant with you. You are not to make a covenant with the people who are living in this land. You are to tear down their altars, but you have not obeyed me. What is this you have done? Therefore, now I say, I will not drive out these people before you. They will be thorns in your side, and their gods will be a trap for you. And when the angel of the Lord has spoken these words for all of Israel, the people wept loudly, so they named the place Bochum, and they offered sacrifice there to the Lord. Now, this, this happened in the transitionary per period uh, as Joshua was dying, remember Joshua divided the land, okay, um, and so as they started to go out and divided the land, um, they did not do what God told them to do, which was what wipe the, wipe the people out, take them out, annihilate them. I don't want the people. I don't want the pagan worshippers living among the people, and so in the first chapter, you remember. Uh, what did they do? Um, they 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 defeated the people, but then they, they didn't drive them out. So they made them uh, forced laborers. Okay, um, forced labor is kind of a step above slaves, but they just made them do the work. But that's not what God told them to do. And so as a result of that, now He says, now this is the problem you have created for yourself. Right? He says, I'm not I will not drive them out. You didn't drive them out, I'm not gonna drive them out. They should have driven them out. 
but they didn't. So then he goes on, verse, uh, verse 6 says, Then Joshua sent the people away, and the Israelites went to take possession of the land, each to his own inheritance. And the people worshipped the Lord throughout Joshua's lifetime, and during the lifetime of the elders who outlived Joshua, they had seen all the Lord's great work he had done. Now remember, I said uh, all this work he had done for Israel. Remember we said that um, I, I we talked about this kind of overlapping. So in chapter 1, we see one set of details. And then and as we get in chapter 2, we zero in on other details. Um, the, the, this group of people that's out living, remember, if you go back 40 years, 45 years, maybe 50 years at this point, uh, remember all of these people that were who lived, one, we see Caleb. Now Caleb is 85 during the time of his, as he is now getting ready to, you know, take possession of his land. Um, so they're kind of the oldest people in Israel at this point, Joshua and Caleb. Then you, <clears throat> from there, you're going to have people who are about 60. Then you got people from 60 to 40. And that remember, there were people who were actually born in Israel, or born in the wilderness, I should say, born in the wilderness during that 40-year period of time. So it's kind of a, in, in general, these are the people that he is saying um, that are sort of dying out now. Um, so then, uh, let me see. Verse 10, the whole generation, I said that whole generation was also gathered to their ancestors. And notice this, after them, another generation rose up who did not know the Lord or the works he had done for Israel. Where did we see this before? That that phrase, that statement, where did we see that before? Well, if we go back to Exodus, remember, we saw where Joseph, who was a tremendous blessing to Egypt by way of might, by way of power, remember through him, God not only saved them from the, the worldwide famine, but he also prospered them. And so after Joseph's death, and, and if you kind of go back and you read, you almost see, you see some of the same language here, right? So the blessing of the former generation, now all of a sudden, another generation right up, who's it? notice this, they did not know the Lord or his works he had done for Israel. Now when he said this, he's not saying that, in other words, history is history. We're going to see that even moving forward. We're going to see, remember, history, even when when the Gadites and the um, Reubenites and the half a tribe of Manasseh, remember when they built the altar? Well, when Israel came, what did they do? They started rehearsing history to them. Don't you remember what happened in the, in the wilderness? We're going to see, you know, throughout that certain events are going to be recounted in terms of history. So the, so the fact that there's history, he's not saying that they don't know what all these works is. You remember even the, 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 the pagans around them knew. Jericho shut the gates. Remember, this was, four, this was 40 years after what God had done to, to Egypt. And they're remembering this. So even with, when Pharaoh, it said another generation rose up, who, that Pharaoh, another Pharaoh rose up who didn't know Joseph. It's not like that the history wasn't there. The history certainly was there. So, but notice the term, they did not know the Lord. And that word know is what, what you need to understand how that word is used. We kind of go back to when the Bible says that Adam knew his wife. So we're talking about experience here. So in other words, it's not like they didn't know in terms of the, the, the information or the thoughts. But as they grew up, and we even see it now, there are generations right now that we're living with who do not know the horrors 
of slavery, of Jim Crow racism, of the Holocaust, right? Um, as we move forward, there will be generations who will not know 9-11, when the new horrors of the Ukraine, Russia attacking Ukraine, we see it on TV, but there's going to be generations they won't know. And that's why you see even now that there are people who deny the Holocaust exists, deny racism exists, and all these things because they don't know. that. that it, and that's the kind of how that word is being used here. This generation is rising up. They did not know the Lord. And and so the generation environment, and we're just talking about a generation now ago that had all these wonderful works. It said, verse 11, Then the, the Israelites did what was evil in the Lord's sight. They worshiped the Baals and abandoned the Lord and the God of their fathers who brought them out of Egypt. And by the way, this they, who brought them out of Egypt, they know the Lord brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods from the surrounding peoples and bowed down to them. They infuriated the Lord, but they abandoned him and worshiped Baals and Asherah. Now, this is one of the most perplexing things about Israel, that they would, they had the living God, but they turned to pagan worship. Okay, that, that's astounding. Verse 14, the Lord's anger burned against Israel. And he handed them over to marauders. And these would be traveling uh, raiders, right? Traveling, they would go up, they would attack these uh, these bands of people, groups of, of men would attack different villages. Uh, he handed them over to mar uh, to marauders who ha who raided them. He sold them to the enemies around them, and they could no longer resist their enemies. And whenever the Israelites went out, the Lord was against them and brought disaster upon them, just as he had promised and sworn to them. So they suffered greatly. Now remember Deuteronomy chapter 28 that Moses told them, right? The curses and the blessing. Now they're experiencing the curses. Verse 16, the Lord raised up judges who saved them from the power of the um, marauders, 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 okay? Now, this right here is now a biblical definition of the term judge, judges. He raised up judges who saved them from the power of the, the marauders. Okay, so that's what the judge do. We'll see that there, it's going to be a twofold that the judges would not only administer, but they also equally, and probably more so, would save Israel. He raised up judges who saved them from the power of the marauders. And we'll get into each one of these judges in the next chapter, verse 17. But they did not listen to their judges. Instead, they prostituted themselves with other gods. Bowing down to them, they quickly turned away from the way of their fathers, who had walked in obedience to the Lord's command. They did not, they, they did not do as their fathers did. Now, this would be, of course, I guess, the immediate generation in the previous, right? Joshua, who faithfully, Joshua's generation, Joshua and that generation faithfully served the Lord. During the Moses time, remember, there was always this topsy-turvy, back and forth. But Joshua's generation probably was the purest of all the generations. That during that time, they did serve the Lord. Verse 18. Whenever the Lord would raise up a judge for the Israelites, the Lord was with him and saved the people from the power of their enemies while the judge was still alive. The Lord was moved to pity whenever they groaned because of those who were oppressing and afflicting him. Now, this is what, what is happening here is there, this is, he's laying out the entire book of Judges. So in other words, this, when we move on, we're going to see that this is what's exactly going to happen. He's laying out, the writer here is laying out the entire book of Judges. But also, notice this, and we're going to see this, that the Lord is going to raise up a judge. He's going to deliver them. While that judge was alive, the people will be reserved the faithful. When that judge will die, the people will immediately fall back into sin. And 
these people that they would try to bow down to will in turn oppress them greatly. And notice what he says right here. The Lord will have pity on them. Now I want to uh, say this. Oftentimes when people talk about the Old Testament, that they always talk about the God of wrath, the God of anger. And they never put context to that. And why is God anger? Well, right here. Why is God? Why did God order them to drive out the nations around? Because of the, in, in, the, 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 the immense wickedness of those nations. And we'll get into that. These people were wicked beyond belief. And so, why did He judge Israel? Why did He judge these, all, the wickedness? That that's what you have to look at when you say He's the God of wrath. But you also have to look at why He's angry. The, in, the wickedness of the people. Now, the pagan worshipers, there were sexual perversions. They were they were just cruel. Like we're going to see where they will offer their children in fire. I mean, they're, they're the cruelty. And we're going to see even here in the book of Judges. Verse 19. He said, uh, whenever the judge died, the Israelites would act even more corrupt than their fathers going after other gods to worship and bow down to them. They did not turn from their evil practice uh, of their obstinate ways. I, I, you hear me say this, I'm going to keep, I'll say this throughout, that the Israelites' unbelief was unbelievable. And I said, think about this. They had the, the living God, and yet they chose to worship pagan gods. I mean, they, they they wasn't even atheists. They just worshiped, they 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 went <laughs> uh, the living God, and then they they would go to these and, and notice this. This is the pattern of the book of Judges here, that they would go to these different, they would bow down to these gods, and the people would treat them even worse. That is the most interesting thing that the people would treat them worse. Verse 20, the Lord's anger burned against Israel and he declared, because this nation has violated my covenant that I made with their fathers and disobeyed me, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations Joshua left when he died. Now we kind of see why he included that brief period here as Joshua was, you know, after he had divided the land. They went out and then, you know, you saw the, the the contrast here. Verse 22, I did not, I did this to test Israel and to see whether they would keep the Lord's way by walking in it as their fathers had. And the Lord left these nations and not drive them out immediately. He did not, he did not hand them over to Joshua. Now, um, the word test, again, where did we see this before? Remember when the Bible said in, in, in terms of Abraham, he did test Abraham. The word test means to prove. There's one thing, in, people sometimes mix the term test, temptation, right? So the difference between test and temptation. Well, temptation is one thing, but to test, as God never leads us into temptation, but the word test means to prove. So, uh, uh, you know, it would be like if, um, you know, if I, when uh, Apple made this phone here, you know, before they put it out on the market, they tested, they proved that it would do what they said it would do. Well, Israel failed the test. That's the sad part. Israel failed the test. So, now, that kind of is the outline of what Judges is going to be. And it's going to be repeatedly. As I said, it's going to be frustrating. It's, it's frustrating reading this because you think, man, how many times will they, will they fall? How many times will they sin? Well, repeatedly. Okay, guys, chapter three in the next study. I'll see you then.